Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how super easy it is to install Super ATV's winch and winch mount on the Polaris Razor Pro XP. So let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is remove the upper portion of the dash. So we're going to go ahead and remove the two T40s holding the hood on. Let's go ahead and remove the hood. Set it aside for now. I'm going to go ahead and remove this T40 here, as well as this one here. And then we'll remove these two push pins just to make it so we can move our plastic around. Then we're gonna grab a hold of this latch, flip it up, and open up this center storage compartment. And these can get stuck sometimes on the clips, so I just like to kind of take a push pin removal tool, just pry straight up on it. I have to do it to both sides here. pick up on our storage compartment. We're gonna go ahead and remove our USB port. We'll just grab a hold of this little rubber boot. Pull it out and then pull our USB port through. Then we're gonna come over here. We're gonna open up this compartment. And we're gonna remove all four of the T20 screws here. After you open up your passenger side storage compartment. Then we're gonna take our push pin removal tool or something that we can pry up on this plastic with. We're gonna start right here with our lid open and just work this plastic around. There's a clip in there, Hold it in place. We'll just pop right up. This piece will remove. And then you'll have one, two, and three T40s you'll need to remove. This one right here There'll be a screw there. Our clip is currently messed up, so we don't have a screw in it as of right now. So we'll just remove this one. Then this one. Then we'll go over here to the driver's side. Do the same thing with this panel. And then you'll have a T40 right here that needs to be removed. And then this T40 right here. Then we'll just go ahead and remove this one. Just like that. And then we'll remove this T40 right here, as well as this one right here. It's kind of tough to get to this one. What I like to do is just take my steering wheel, pull it all the way up, and come right here. Loosen it. Just like that. We'll pull our steering wheel all the way down and lock it so it stays out of the way. Now our dash is gonna be loose. Be able to move it around. Just kind of pull it towards the steering wheel here. It will be somewhat tight, but it will come out. And once you get it up over top, you can kind of slide it this way a little bit. We'll just go over here to our passenger side. And we'll just grab a hold of our upper dash here. I'm just gonna throw it right up on the roof just to keep it out of our way, just like that. And now we've gained access to our pulse bar and we already have our pulse plug installed, which this pulse plug right here can be purchased from superatv.com. And we have our ground and then our hot, and then we're gonna use our pulse plug to get our keyed on power source. So the next thing we're gonna do is come out here to the front of the machine on our front bumper. And we're gonna go ahead and remove these four T40s holding the center section of our face on. come over here and remove this T40 as well as this T40 down here and then this T40 and this T40. We'll go ahead and remove our front portion of the fascia and our grill. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the hardware for this right here for our front bumper. There'll be two bolts back here through this hole They're on each side. up front. And then we'll go ahead and remove the two push pins that are down through this hole right here. Move our front bumper. And we'll go ahead and remove all four of these bolts here. And remove our mount. So the next thing we're gonna do is get our winch out of the box as well as our winch mount. And we're gonna get our hardware for our winch that's gonna be in the winch kit. It's gonna attach the winch to the winch mount. And then also we're gonna wanna get our fair lead hardware. It'll be this Allen bolt. It'll come with a lock washer and then a flat washer and then a nut. We wanna make sure we have all that ready to go. So the winch mount's gonna install to the machine just like this right here. So with that being said, we want to make sure that our wiring connections are on the passenger side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our winch, lay it onto the mount, we'll grab our rope and we'll slide it up through the hole where the fair lead's going to be on the mount, so that way everything's out of our way. And we're going to grab our hardware that's going to come provided with the winch, we'll have our bolt a lock washer, then a flat washer. We already have it installed onto the bolt here, so what we're gonna do is rotate our mount, or if you're using a table, you can slide it off to the edge, get your holes lined up. We'll do this for both sides, so we'll just rotate it around, slide this side off the edge, the holes should be pretty well lined up. You may have to move them around a little bit. Let's make sure you get everything good and started straight. And once we have all our hardware started, we'll just roll our winch up like this, pull the tension off of our hardware, and then tighten them up. it's nice and tight. So we'll rotate it up like this and we're going to grab our fair lead. We'll go ahead and grab our rope. We'll feed it through the fair lead like this. Slide our fair lead all the way up to the winch mount. Then I'll grab our lock washer, our nut, our flat washer, and then our allen headed screw. The allen headed screw will go towards the outside with the threads going inward. We'll put both of those in just to kind of hold it in place for us. And we'll reach around on the back side, slide our lock washer on, then our flat washer. Then our nylock nut. And then just go ahead and get your, your bolt started into the nut here. Make sure you got a good couple threads on him. Then we're going to take our lock washer again, and then flat washer, and start our nut. And once you have your hardware good and started, this fair lead can kind of adjust a little bit. Just make sure you line it up center. It'll make it look the best. I like to just kind of snug one side a little bit and kind of use it to hold it in place. These don't have to be super tight, just enough. So it looks straight there. We're lined up pretty good on the top and bottom. We'll go ahead and grab our clevis hook, pull the pin out of it, slide the pin back through. This time we want it to go through the winch rope. We'll take a cotter pin, slide it through. And we'll just take it and we'll bend it down and around and away from itself. Then we're going to grab our stop block. And on the stop block, we're going to have two washers per 
screw, and then a nylock nut. The screws will go through like this with a washer on the head. We'll take our stop block, put it right up here by where we put the clovis hook on. Another thing with your stop block, the cutout portion of it, you wanna make sure that it's going towards the front or towards the clevis hook. Then once we have all our hardware started, we'll just go through and tighten all four of the screws. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab four M10 by 30 millimeter bolts provided in the hardware kit, and then two M10 nylock nuts. For these two holes down here, we're gonna use two of our M10 by 30s with no nuts, they'll thread right in. For this hole here, as well as this hole here, we'll use our M10 by 30 with the nylock nut. So these bolts will go through these holes in the winch mount, up here on the top right, and then top left. Grab the winch mount, kind of lay it into place, get the bolt started. So to reach around on the back side, you can kind of hold it in place a little bit with your knee, if you need be, or if you have somebody to help you, it makes it a lot easier. Get your hardware started on the right side as well as the left side. Pick up on our winch mount to get the lower holes lined up. Let's thread our bolts right in. I like to go through and make sure everything's started nice and straight. And then we go through and we're gonna start tightening up our hardware. Then tighten these lower bolts. And then, since we haven't ran our winch wires or anything yet, there's two ways that you could go about this. You could have left your winch loose or not put it on at all and then ran your wires down here and connected them. But if you go to connect them with the winch on there, all we're gonna have to do is just take off this little bracket. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. It's super easy to remove, super easy to reinstall. And that's all we're gonna need to do in order to get our winch wires fed down through here and connected. So now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our front bumper. Just slide it right into place. We'll just go ahead and fully tighten our bumper hardware here. And then the last thing we'll do up here is not reinstall our fascia and our grill, but we're gonna wait till we get our wires connected before we do that. The next thing we're gonna do is grab our solenoid for our winch out of the kit, and then one of our screws that we're gonna use to attach the solenoid to the machine. We're gonna slide a screw through the bottom hole here. And we're gonna to come to this section right here underneath the dash. We're gonna see three holes right here. This is on the driver's side. We're gonna to go to the very bottom hole with one of our screws already poked through the solenoid. And we're gonna slide it all the way through the hole and get it lined up. We're gonna lay it to the point to where we can tighten it. And it's gonna be sitting as straight as we can. We're gonna find a spot for us to drill a hole in this plastic here so we can mount our solenoid up. And this spot here looks about as good as any. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is just mark a spot right here and then you'll just take a drill bit, drill it out, and then we'll mount up a solenoid. So now we're gonna go ahead and take one of our Phillips headed screws that we're gonna to use to attach our solenoid to our machine. We'll just go ahead and slide one through. I like to start with the upper one. We're just gonna take it, line it up with the hole that we just drilled. We'll just kind of hold it in position there. And we'll go ahead and take a flat washer onto the back side of it, get it slid into position. And then our lock washer. And we'll take our nut. Run it all the way up there until it touches. We'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing for our lower hardware. Then once we have our hardware started, we'll just go ahead and fully tighten it. So 
So next we're gonna grab our red and black wire. We're gonna be attaching the black wire to the ground, which will be on the solenoid here, the black post, and then the ground wire over here on the bus bar. Go ahead and remove the nut that's holding the ground cable onto the bar here. We've already pre-cut our wires to length. We're gonna run our ground wire down, then back up, and we'll attach it right here to the ground post. So we'll get it on there, then we'll just take our nut, thread that back on. And we'll just go ahead and fully tighten that once we get everything lined out how it needs to be. So here's our ground post right here. So we'll just take the ground wire, slide it right down on there like that. Let's go ahead and get our nut started here. And we're gonna leave it loose just in case we need to make any adjustments with our wiring. Then we're gonna take our hot wire. And we're gonna go down over here around the same location. We're gonna go ahead and run one side of our wire right there with our ground wire. And then we'll come right here. And there is the positive or the hot side or bus bar. Just gonna go ahead and remove the nut. Just as we did to the ground. Slide that hot wire off. And then we're gonna slide our wire for our winch on first. Then we're gonna take the factory hot wire, slide it back on, then we'll reinstall our nut. And we'll go ahead and fully tighten our ground wire nut right here, as well as the hot wire nut right here. We're gonna head over to our solenoid. Locate the red post. We'll go ahead and remove our nut and our lock washer and our washer. Put our, our hot wire on. Let's go ahead and hand tighten these. Remember, I like to leave them loose just in case we need to rotate them around. So next we're gonna go ahead and grab our yellow and blue wires. And we're gonna run these wires down the same route as we did our hot and ground. And we'll just let them go all the way to the floorboard here. And then after we get them attached, I'll show you where we're going to route them. I like to take these wires, route it underneath the hot wire here, and kind of back and around. That way it keeps all these wires off of each other. You know, you don't want any wire contact. You know, that could cause a short, could spark. You know, there's all kinds of bad things that could happen if you have a hot and a ground touching each other especially if you're trying to use the winch, it just won't be good. So we're gonna go ahead and get this wire started on. So we're gonna do the same thing with this yellow wire. Run it down through the same route. There's this little hole, this little opening here where we've been running our wires down through here. We're just gonna go right here with a yellow wire and go right to the yellow post. Let's go ahead and reinstall our washers. So now we have them all attached. And we're gonna come over here to the passenger side. So then we're just gonna find this grommet right here in the firewall. Cut a slot in it big enough to feed your wires through. And then you're just gonna start feeding your wires, your yellow and your blue, out towards the winch. So we've already cut our slot. So we're just gonna start feeding our wires through here. like that. Just feed it out there as far as you can. And then we'll go out to the front of the machine and we'll start routing them the way they need to be routed. So we went ahead and took our pulse bus bar plug out just to show you which wire we're gonna to need to be connecting to. 
to get our keyed on source. We have our orange wire here. That's gonna be the keyed on power source. This is gonna to connect to the red wire on our Super ATV rocker switch. This can be purchased with the kit. It's on the website, you can buy it. I highly recommend you do, it makes it a lot nicer, a lot easier. However, you can complete the install without this switch and connecting the keyed on power source is gonna be the same. On the harness that comes with the winch, you'll still have a red wire. This is still gonna be your keyed on source wire and you'll wanna to connect to the orange wire. So we went ahead and stripped both of these wires back. We're gonna go ahead and take the orange keyed on wire. We're gonna slide it into our connector here and we'll go ahead and crimp down one side. Then we'll take our red wire and it's gonna go in right here after we feed our harness through the dash. We're gonna take our rocker switch and we're gonna go here to our rocker switch panel. We've already removed one of the caps for our rocker switch panel here. So we're just gonna feed our wire down and into the dash, right about in the same location that we're running our winch wires through. We'll just feed all our slack through. We'll just pop our rocker switch right into place in the dash. You can shorten this harness, but there's gonna be quite a few wires in there. You'd have to make all your connections. So the way that I usually like to do it with this specific harness, is just roll it up and we'll throw a zip tie around it. You don't want to fold it up too tight. You know, that's about how much I like to loop it. And it's not super tight, just to hold it in place. Nothing too tight, cut off the excess there. Then we'll just kind of tuck our wires in and you'll see this plug coming off of the side of the solenoid. This is where we need to make our connection here. So we'll just slide it together. Go ahead and tighten up this nut right here. like that, get it nice and tight. And now we're ready to make our connection. Over here, this connector. Remember you wanna make sure it's the orange wire on your pulse bar. Crimp it down, make sure you get a good crimp all the way around it. And grab a hold of both wires, pull on them, make sure they're in there nice and tight. And then I'm gonna go ahead and heat shrink down this connector. What it's doing is just sealing it up nice and tight. So if any water was to get up here, it's not gonna make it to our connection. We got both sides. So now we're just gonna take our pulse plug, plug it right back in. Then we're gonna have a little bit of excess here. We can kind of pull our wires out and just kind of run it all together here. Make a small loop. Once we have it looped up how we want it, we'll just tie it on to the rocker switch wiring there. Throw a zip tie around it. Slide it all right down into place. Then I'm gonna go ahead and lift our machine up and we're gonna run our wires that we previously fed through the firewall, run it up to the winch and make our connections. So we've got our blue and yellow wires. Now what I'm gonna do is I like to run my wires through the heat shrink whenever we're running them outside. You definitely don't have to do this. This is just for looks. It makes it look a lot cleaner. It makes it look like when you walk up to the machine, you're not gonna see your winch wires. It's gonna look really nice. And also it's gonna help protect the wires a little bit as well. So once we have our wires, how we like them, we're gonna go ahead and start feeding them down towards the winch. Then we're just gonna run our wires right alongside the radiator hoses. And then there's gonna be a hole right here in this pocket right below the radiator hose. That's where we're gonna run our wires through. You wanna run the yellow one through first. And it's gonna go back in behind the winch. And then you'll grab your blue wire. Let's feed this blue wire down through here as well. Get them up here and you'll be ready to make your connections. 
I remember earlier I told you we'd have to remove this bracket right here. Again, it's just a 10 millimeter screw. All right, we loosened it up. And we're gonna go ahead and loosen the nut off of the terminal for the yellow wire. We're gonna go ahead and grab it. I'm gonna pull it out here a little bit and I'm gonna put my cover on. Slide it on there. Make sure you have your washers on. And run that wire all the way up. And we'll go up here to our blue post. Connect the blue wire. So the next thing we're gonna do is go through and tighten all the connections on top of the solenoid here. Then once you get them tightened, we're just gonna put our covers on each of the posts here on our solenoid. Next, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our grill. Then we're gonna start reinstalling our fascia. This will just slide right into position. Let's go ahead and reinstall all our hardware here for the fascia. And we're gonna slide our winch rope through this piece here and attach it using the factory hardware. There'll be two screws up top and then two on the bottom. We'll just go through, make sure all our hardware is tightened and then double check all our wiring. Now you wanna go through, make sure that your winch is working good. Ours is, so we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our hood, our dash, go through, make sure everything's tight. And that's how super quick and easy it is. Install Super ATV's winch and winch mount on the Polaris Razor Pro XP.